FBI agents have more power than almost any other authority out there, including the police. But what happens when undercover FBI agents get arrested by cops who have no idea? Stay down now! You guys are making a big mistake. Here are four examples of this happening, starting with the case of Agent Hernandez. In the early hours of December 6, 2016, shots were heard ringing out in a Grand Rapids parking lot towards a police officer. A team of armed units rushed to take down the threat, but they found something Thing they never could have expected. You're gonna you want us on him? Okay. Give me this one. Secured. Empty. He's got a badge. I would know who it is, sir. Federal Bureau, he's an FBI agent. The man who was allegedly shooting at a police officer turned out to be an FBI agent. The man was identified as Agent Ruben Hernandez, a Las Vegas agent in Michigan on undisclosed business. Obviously, there are too many questions to count, so to help shed a little light on the situation, the cops decide to call up his partner, John Salazar, who arrived at around 5 a.m. Um, we're gonna try to find out maybe shed some light on what led up to all this. Right, and, and what I'm trying to just verify is make sure who you have, yeah. basically. It, who do you have, or do you have a photo? Or yeah, yeah, we I got a photo him? coming. Or just a... We think it's a uh, room. Yeah, can I see him or give him a photo? Yeah, just we'll so get I you can... a photo here. Okay, great, sure. right, thanks. All right, so. All right. Are you Lieutenant Drake? I am not. Oh. Tell me who that is. Oh my gosh, okay, that is uh, Ruben Hernandez. John receives confirmation that the man they apprehended is in fact his partner Ruben. Definitely not the news he was expecting at five in the morning. Man, what, is he okay? Like what happened to his face there? Yeah, he looks scuffed up, but you know, that wasn't done here by us. That was before he made contact with us. So we'll make sure he gets checked and everything like do, that. Uh, do we want to get him both? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Okay. He wanted to see a picture before he talked to us. Okay. While everybody waits for a lieutenant to arrive, two of the cops decide to move over and have a secret conversation. Unfortunately for the cops, covering a camera doesn't stop it from picking up audio. In essence, one cop mentioned how he could smell alcohol on John and that he'd noticed him eating multiple sticks of gum to presumably hide the scent on his breath. From this moment on, the cops start getting more and more suspicious of him until they finally decide to question him. So did you get a call from him tonight? What's that? Did you get a call from him tonight? Um. Someone called us and we weren't, we're still trying to figure out who called us to warrant, let's say he was in trouble or something. That wasn't you? Um, listen, I, I'm not going to answer anything right now. I have no idea. How come you're not going to answer anything? Well, I mean, I, I got to wait for, you know, I'm talking to my superiors and everything else to see. Oh, she told a lieutenant you're coming down here to kind of shed some light on what happened. Right. No, no, I'm here. And then there's also going to be a, uh, a special agent from the RA here in Grand Rapids. Uh, he's, uh, I don't know if you know uh, S.A. Burns or not, but yeah. he's going to come down here. And so... Hey, Sean. You guys, you Salazar? Yeah, are you Trey? No, I'm Sean Burns. I'm the SSR. All right. Okay. Got it. All right, what I want you to do is these guys are going to take the gun and hand over to me, okay? Okay, I'll just let them do what they got to okay. do. Okay, all right, hold it. There you go. Okay, you got your creds, right? Yeah, you can hold on to that. I'll just take this. It's at this point the cops decide to detain John on suspicion of DUI, so they take his firearm and bring him into a room with a breathalyzer. Need you to seal your lips and blow tell, and tell the beeps. Are uh, you ready? Yep, seal your lips and blow. Keep going. There you go. Your BAC right now is 0 .116 at 522 in the morning. We'll probably be uh, holding on to your firearm. The legal limit for driving in Michigan is .08, so John is just over, and it's likely the number was higher an hour earlier when he was actually driving. Looking at the big picture though, this is actually a very unfortunate situation for John. That night, he'd been drinking with a friend at a club while they were off duty. It was only when he was back at his hotel when the local PD called him to come and verify it was his partner they arrested. Obviously, John shouldn't have driven his car to get there, but nevertheless, 
you can see how he would make that mistake in such a stressful situation. But other than the body cam cover-up, the cops handled this perfectly. However, the same cannot be said for the cops in the next case, who showed exactly what not to do when dealing with an undercover FBI agent. Run your body cam? I, I am now, because I don't know how legit you are at the moment. It's okay. Special agent Hatton. The FBI. Okay. You got that on body cam? I do, but I don't understand what the problem is with you meet me at the office. I'll talk to the U.S. Attorney's Office about it. You can cut off the recording device now. Okay. Well, I will when I leave the area, sir. This agent was actually investigating police corruption in the Franklin County Police Department, but he had no idea just how corrupt this officer would turn out to be. The agent had called this officer to meet at a random location and refused to meet him at their offices. If it's not already obvious, everything this agent does and says from now on is a test to try and see how well this cop follows conduct, and if his co-workers follow suit. This is why he asked him to turn off his body cam, and luckily for the cop, he passed this first test with flying colors. However, it doesn't seem as though it's going to last for very long. Am I being detained? Am I being detained? You're the one who called me here, sir. How yes. did you get my phone number? I can't give you that information. You are detained at this time, sir. Hey, I don't think this guy's legit, man. Now, I need to take my weapon off, okay? Do I have permission to take it off? No, you don't have permission okay. to take it off. Just hang tight right here. I'm not cuffing you. Things are understandably not adding up for the officer, so he decides to detain the agent and waits for backup to arrive. We're just trying to check your validity. You called a deputy sheriff's personal cell phone. You can't tell me how you got the number. That's right. Your tag's not coming back to the FBI. Correct. Okay. I haven't seen a badge. I've seen an ID card. I haven't seen a badge. You have not seen... No, sir. I haven't seen a badge. I've seen an ID card. I handed this to you. Did you grab it? Take it out of my hand. Do you not see a badge? I see a badge now. That's the first time I saw oh, the badge, sir. Well, you don't need to be a deputy. When backup arrives, the officer explains the full situation to them, saying the suspect is armed, uncooperative, and above all, incredibly suspicious. Receiving a call on your personal phone number from an FBI agent would definitely ring alarm bells as a cop, but it's important that they continue to be professional and follow the rules. The officers proceed to handcuff the agent and place him in the back of their patrol car, where he starts to complain that the heat is way too high in the vehicle and that he desperately needs air. But all of a sudden, they receive a call from HQ that should put the entire event to rest. 33, go ahead. I'm on the phone with his supervisor. To... I was telling him that he is legit. So they just said... Painful. All right, that's what I'm doing right now. They just called back. He is legit. Even after this, though, the officer still decides to keep the agent inside the patrol vehicle, despite being explicitly told that he is actually an FBI agent. Instead of letting him out as instructed, the officers continue to talk about the situation while he begs to be let go. But after an extra three minutes of completely unnecessary conversation, the agent is finally let out of the vehicle. But it seems as though he's not feeling too good. We're, we're releasing you right no, now, call sir. call 911 now. After a further 10 minutes, medics arrive and the agent is taken away in an ambulance. Thankfully, despite what can only be described as disrespect and neglect from the officers, the agent suffered no serious injuries, but things ended differently for ATF agent Burke, who was treated so badly by police that he had to file a lawsuit against them. Agent Burke was dispatched to a house to confiscate a firearm that had been illegally acquired by the residents. However, instead of being granted access to the home, the door was instead shut in his face and the residents called the police. The cops were given Agent Burke's badge number, but still treated the incident as a break-in and Burke as a criminal. Hey, turn around, let me see your hands. Turn around, let me see your hands. Okay, let me see your hands. I need to see some ID. Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! I'm a federal agent. 9171 10 -3. Federal agent. Get on the ground! Agent Burke refuses immediate orders to get on the ground, likely so police can check if he's armed or not, and continues the investigation safely. Burke believes that because he's a federal agent, he's not subject to the orders of municipal police. But if that was the case, any criminal could falsely claim there were a federal agent to bypass police orders. While he may not think he looks like a threat himself, it remains that he should have politely followed the orders so the cops could figure out the situation easily. But instead, 
said, things continue to escalate. What the heck's the matter with you? Who do you think you are? Get on, I'm get on the ground! I'm not getting on the ground! Chopper things. I'm not getting on the ground! 7 I'm pulling up. I got my ID. Do not I'm reach for your up. waist! Keep your hands up! Once a second officer arrives, Burke finally follows the orders and lays down on the ground. Do not resist! I'm not resisting! You're acting like a no, moron! Wait a second! Stop. Wait a second! Wait a second! No, don't do this! Wait a second, I got a medical condition! Get my license out of my pocket! Please. We're getting you secured first! Please, please, wait! No, whoa! No. Hold on, hold on, I'm hyperventilating! Please! Wait, please, sir! I'm, Wait, a, resisting. I, I'm not. Stop resisting. Would you now. please get my ID out of my left pocket? Stop. I'm begging you. My my wife's pray. Please. It's Stop right here. Resisting. Please get it. Wait, sir, on. help me up. Just hold me up. Sir, I can't do it. Wait. Sir! Stop resisting now! Please, please help me. Sir, please get, get my get my, my get federal taser. creds! Get your taser out, Jill. No, don't do that, please. Sir. Don't make me tase you! You're gonna get taped. Put your right no. arm behind your back. Okay. Put your right arm behind Help your back. Help me up. No. Help me up. No, you're gonna stay on the ground and put your right arm behind your back. Let me breathe. Let me breathe. You can I'm breathe gonna just fine. I'm gonna. Ow! Ow! Don't do that! Okay! Here! My get God! Him get him cuffed! It is cuffed! Please get stop! Cuffed. Get him cuffed! Please stop, sir! Wait a second! Yeah. Sir! Please help me up. In the distressing footage, Burt continues to tell the officers that he's an ATF agent out on a call and to simply take his ID from his back pocket. After finally looking at his ID, officers keep him under arrest and take him to their patrol vehicle. Why would you make us do this? I didn't want you to. I wanted to. Wait. No, hold him. He's holding him. Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. Relax. Hold him. Sir. Hey, guys, please, just talk to me for one second, please. Get in the car, no, we'll wait. talk later. Sir! The cops then force Burke into the vehicle, talking over his pleas and explanations regarding his medical condition. Please, sir! If you are a real police officer, you ought to be ashamed of yourself! I was trying to give you my creds! We got him in the car. He might even be a real cop, but he wouldn't tell us, wouldn't, wouldn't do anything. Wouldn't get on the ground. I mean, what the heck? We had to tase him, so we got a medic coming. If he is an actual police officer, he ought to be ashamed of himself. I'm not ashamed. You're not. You're right. You're not. Yeah. No, you screwed up. You bet. Police continued to detain Burke in their patrol vehicle for over an hour longer before eventually releasing him without charges. Despite not necessarily showing perfect conduct himself, Burke decided to sue the Columbus Police Department, citing excessive force and unlawful arrest. The original complaint says that after the incident, which caused him both physical and mental harm, he was taken from active duty and confined solely to administrative and support roles, with adjustments having to be made to the department to accommodate him. As of this video, Videos upload, the case is still ongoing. Realistically, both parties involved in this case were in the wrong to some extent, but in the case of Mac Proctor, things are totally different. Mac is supposedly an undercover agent with a very strong knowledge of the law, and he's about to show exactly how corrupt police officers can be completely unprovoked. Mac was parked in a private parking lot waiting for a takeout order while on his shift as a delivery driver. While his vehicle wasn't in a designated parking spot, it wasn't blocking the flow of traffic, and he'd only left it there unattended while picking up his food. Upon returning to his vehicle, Mac was approached by a police officer stating he was violating parking rules. Alright, Mr. Proctor. Uh, that is your last name. Uh, everything okay? Do I need to answer any of your questions? You don't have to answer anything, dude. Okay. You don't um, have to. I could stand here all day. I get paid either way. Can you go ahead and finish your job so I can carry on? What's with the anger, dude? I'm not angry. You're not angry? You always talk to everybody like that? I'm I'm not angry. Oh, okay. okay. I just want you to go ahead and wrap things up, please. Yeah, okay. Of course, Mac has every right to stay silent in the face of the officer's questions, especially ones that don't at all pertain to criminal proceedings. At no point did he raise his tone or say anything out of line, yet the officer asks why he's being so angry. Many people think that some police officers are used to consistently being in command and control on these interactions, and it's possible the same is true with this officer. When Mac exercised his rights and just asked for things to be moved along, this cop was surprised and took it as a combat statement all right well you know i'm gonna give you a, a break on it but you know what i'm saying this isn't a parking spot okay dude you're not giving me a break you're harassing me at I'm this point I, i'd like to here. leave may i leave now please uh, well do you understand am i being detained you? yes you are okay all right so do you understand why i stopped you do i need to answer any no, more you of your questions I'm, you don't have to okay 
The officer informs Mac that he is being detained for parking here. To issue a citation for parking violation, you must be breaking either local, state, or federal law. Something like parking in a handicap spot without proper documentation. Hey, Mr. Proctor, can I give you your stuff so you can leave? Can you? I can, but you're the one. I would have let you go a long time ago. I what do I need to do for you to hand me my documents so well, I can I'll leave? I'll get you right now. I just want to know that you know, you're okay, because usually I don't get people all... This what do I need to do for you to hand me my documents so I can be on my way? you're okay. I don't need to answer any of your questions. Okay, there we go again. Jesus Christ. I'm trying to say that... Uh, you're trying, trying to display your power to me no, right now. I'm concerned about it. Is there a problem to be concerned about another human being? You okay. have no reason to be concerned about me. So it's okay then. You're okay then. You can hand me my documents and I can be on my way. Or we can. Fine. Okay. You're not going to. Okay, here. I'll tell you what. I'm going to take a chance on you. All right, here. Mr. Proctor, um, you brought everything's cool. All right. We're blocking traffic here to your stuff. Mac was allowed to leave without further incident, but this interaction raises questions about why he was met with further difficulties after doing nothing other than exercising his Fifth Amendment right. In fact, it's strange that the entire interaction even happened in the first place. If the officer had observed Mac's vehicle obstructing traffic, the incident could have been avoided by simply asking him to move his vehicle out of the way and let him go about his day from there. Instead, the officer detained Mac, preventing him from moving his vehicle and keeping it in the very place that's allegedly impeding traffic flow. The cop later found out that Mac wasn't even a federal agent or officer himself, and simply managed to prove just how valuable it is to know the law.